All right, well, I'm out here in coastal Georgia today with some dudes, and uh, we're doing some snake fungal disease sampling for Dane's PhD work. And uh, right here is our oh, wow. second cane break of the day. The first one was right over there. Wasn't great looking because it's kind of scuffed up with winter blisters. Probably a candidate for snake fungal disease. This guy looks a lot healthier. But this is a new snake that Dane needs to process, so unfortunately we are gonna bother this guy a little bit. The snake is an absolute sweetheart right now. All right, guys, this is Dane Conley, who I've known on the internet since, like, I was 12, quite literally, and this is the first time we've been out in person, but uh, Dane is doing research on snake fungal disease, so I wanted him to uh, tell us a little bit about his work and why we're out here today. Yeah, so I've been studying snake fungal disease for the last few years, and today we're in southeast Georgia, and we're lucky enough to come across a decent-sized canebrake rattlesnake. This one does have several lesions that look characteristic of snake fungal disease, and we're processing the snake, taking morphological measurements, and trying to quantify, quantify the severity so we can compare this uh, between other species to try to answer the question, which species are facing the greatest impacts. So when we find snakes today, we're swabbing them. What else are we doing in terms of collecting data? Um, we'll put a pit tag in the snake. Uh, for a variety of reasons, you can get recapture data from that. Uh, if we capture the snake later in the year or in a different year, we could see, uh, did it improve with the disease? Did it uh, get worse? And uh, we can compare that between a variety of different species uh, it's behavior, um, you know, when a snake is infected, uh, they seem to act differently and whether it was basking, if it was under cover, on the crawl. And so like this time of year in the early spring is kind of when this disease is the most prevalent in wild snakes, correct? Yeah, we see a, a, a seasonality trait with snake fungal disease when they come out of uh, hibernation, whether that's due to, you know, their immune system being suppressed from being cold for a while or less shedding to be able to shed uh, these lesions off. And, like in the summer, they clear it off and uh, the infection seems to become less and then it seems to amp back up in the fall. Is this snake that we found here infected with snake fungal disease? Uh, you know, I could glance at it and say that it looks like a lesion of snake fungal, but there's a variety of different infections snakes could get. So I'll take the swab, bring it back to the lab, quantify it, um, with qPCR and that'll be able to tell us whether it's positive or negative and actually how much pathogen is on the snake itself. Yeah, so this is kind of what we're looking, put the scale on mute, this is kind of what we're looking for when we're looking for lesions to swab and just an example of how they would look on a timber rattlesnake. All right, we just weighed our timber and we're going to release it back into this big pile of brush where it was found. There we go. Back to your brush pile. Wow, he stayed there. <laughs> that is such a pretty snake. That blue coloration, gray coloration is awesome. Oh, is that his hole? That's his hole right there. Their chevrons it? are clean too. Yeah, I don't have... I mean, we can just grab another club. Yeah. What a satisfying slurp clip. All right, here's the first timber we saw today. We're back to him. A um, little bit skinny. Dan already swabbed this one for snake fungal last time he was at the spot, so we're just gonna leave it right there. But really pretty blue coloration on this guy. Would be a really nice looking snake if it had a little bit more weight to it. But we're gonna move on and continue herping. Hopefully there is, oh, he's getting grumpy, so I'm gonna leave. I just found a raccoon. Look at that. He's only showing us his butt right now. All right, there we go. Cane break number three, spotted by Justin. Epic. All right, this guy's gonna get processed too and swapped for snake fungal, but very, very productive day. Three timbers, a pygmy, and a racer that I didn't show so far. 12, four. He was ready to go back under there. All right, guys, happy March. We are in North Florida today. We drove a little bit south to do some herping in a new area that I have not spent much time. We're making lunch, and then we're going to hit the field. So yesterday was a great day, and hopefully today will be too. There are so many tiny fish here. Look at this. That was nuts. I tried to get some underwater video, but it didn't look good. Well, guys, I'm admittedly quite surprised that it took this long to find one, but finally, our first glass lizard of the year, this spot looks like it would just be crawling with them, but it took a while to finally turn something of interest up. 
All right, guys, I think this little guy's just a juvenile Eastern glass lizard. He's definitely a little bit different looking, but this habitat's so fantastic. I was expecting to see quite a few today, but it seems like they're not quite as common here as I was expecting. You can see this guy has a little bit of a broken tail, but it's starting to regrow nicely. So Caitlin was over here looking at this dead crab and I was looking at a different part of the same dead crab over there. And when I came over to look at this part, I realized sitting next to the dead crab, possibly even trying to eat it, was a meat lizard. Look at that. That is one of the bigger Eastern glass lizards I have ever seen. And he's missing his tail and he's still this way. So these guys do eat a lot of crabs, but they eat presumably like the little fiddler crabs, not full grown blue crabs, but they do like crab meat. And it seems like they're the most common in areas that have a lot of crabs. So what a majestic animal. I love them so much. Even the Eastern glass lizard, the most common of the Yophosaurus. It's just such a unique and awesome animal that I'm always happy to see. The vast majority of the times we see this species, they're either on the road or under a rock. So to see one actually out doing something is awesome. All right, bud, back to your crab pile. We noticed there's actually quite a few dead crabs in here, so he's probably just making his way around to them looking for little scraps of meat. All right, guys, here's a little brown anole, omnipresent in Florida, pretty much anywhere within the state, but first one I've been able to get video of. All right, everybody, well, today was a bit of a weird day. I don't know if you guys can hear all the southern chorus frogs, southern chorus frogs, southern leopard frogs behind me, but we're about to do a little night shining to wrap up the day. It was uh, not a very snaky day. We did see two coach whips, both of which got away. These leopard frogs are going crazy. Hopefully y'all can hear them over the sound of the damn road. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Not a great look at him, but that is a pig frog. Uh, not, a, not a frog we see very often in Georgia because they are limited to this kind of coastal, more deep south region. Seems pretty tolerant of my light. It's a pretty decent look at him now. Very cool. It's terrible video, but that is an anhinga. <laughs> Such a weird looking thing to see at night backlit in a tree. Oh, what was that? Somebody down there in the water too. Probably the alligator waiting for him to fall in the water. All right, guys, we shined around a little bit, but have not seen much besides the pig frog. I did see another pig frog, but that's really not a species I see often in Georgia, so I'm pretty stoked about that. But we're running out of battery, and we gotta be up early to hit the burns in the morning, so hopefully we'll be able to find some burns. If not, we're gonna be walking through some pretty thick woods. All right, guys, Caitlin just saved the night, spotting her first ever self-spotted rough green snake. This is one of her favorite snakes, so very cool that she got to spot her own tonight. And uh, it's one that I think I walked past, so even better. All right, very nice. For uh, how cool and early in the year it is, he's looking pretty healthy, no blisters or anything. So we'll just let him slip back into the tree where he'll probably spend the whole night, even though it's gonna get down to like 38 degrees tonight. It's pretty ridiculous that these things come out this early and are active in the trees where they sleep. Um, and I could be wrong about that. Maybe he does have a hole that he can get to if it starts to get colder tonight, but it's definitely a weird thing to think about because it is supposed to get quite cold tonight. And then tomorrow it's supposed to be a lot colder than it has been only in like the low sixties. There you go, bud. Back to his castle. So we're laying in the car, getting ready for sleep, and it's nice and spacious back here, but I heard somebody outside my window. I was like, what is this? It's him. Hello, brother. All right, everyone, it's about noon the next day, and unfortunately, it's very windy and not very warm, so. Today might end up being a little bit of a bust, but we're gonna hit a hard route here with Ian and Alyssa. So we've got some extra eyes and hopefully we'll see something. Look at that. Oh, good eyes, Caitlin. First snake of the day, spotted by Caitlin. Baby racer up in a long leaf. All right, classic slow day pine woods tree frog. Oh, oh, there he goes. Well, we've seen one racer. It's been a little bit of a struggle out here, but the habitat's pretty. We might be having a bit of a bunk day today. We shall find out in the next hour or so. 
Look what Ian found. A little pygmy. We got a decent snake on the day. Right next to Ian's foot, luckily. These little guys are pretty chill. Well, thank God Ian flipped this palmetto because otherwise we would have been having a pretty sad day today with just two racers, one of which was actually on the road, surprisingly enough. Um, but yeah, beautiful little dusky pygmy. We'll get a better look at him here in a second, but finally a decent snake on the day. It has been, I mean, it's about to get dark. It's like four o'clock at this point. So long day with very few snakes, but very happy about that. All right, we'll let this guy go in a second, but here he is out on top of his palmetto. He was underneath. Um, I'm trying to get a little something in here for scale for you guys, but you can see he is quite small. This guy was born last year, so he's maybe, what, six months old at this point? Maybe a little bit older. Oh. All right, little mans, I'm going to put you back under your palmetto. He is an absolute little sweetheart, but it is quite chilly out. There you go, dude. Well, that might be the end of the video. We'll see. All right, this will likely be the last herp of the day, but the first fence lizard we've gotten in hand today, this is a female. They're pretty easy to sex because males will have the bright blue belly pretty much all year, especially in the spring though. And that's used to attract the ladies, but we will uh, let her run back under her log. Good morning, everybody. We are making our way back from our coast trip and uh, doing some coastal plain herping here in South Georgia today at some spots that I either have never been to or haven't spent much time. So lots of potential here, but the weather is still unfortunately wintering. It was like 39 last night and the high today is like 63. So it's okay, but it could be a lot better. It's an absolute slider party in here. Look at these guys. This is ridiculous. The ground is sliders. Well, the snaking has not been with us today, so I retreated to a familiar wetland that Truthfully, I have not seen anything in since I was in high school. I think the last time I was here was 2016, or the last time I was here with success was like 2016. But I just flipped this. That is an adult eastern mud salamander. Holy crap. This is the first time I have successfully found this species at this spot since 2016. Such strange and fascinating little salamanders. As much of a pain as they can be. It's always worth it to put in the effort and turn one up. And then I immediately regret it while I'm trying to take photos, but such a cool salamander, so beautiful. And this is a kind of ugly one. I mean, honestly, he's kind of dull as far as mud salamanders go, so. The first time I came here in 2016, we saw four, I believe, so. They can be quite common here, but ever since then, I've returned and found none, so. Almost 10 years ago was the last time I saw a mud salamander at this spot prior to today. There you go, dude. That was all I saw when I flipped him. Tail sticking out of the mud. I've probably been to this swamp and tried to make this video at least five times in the last, I guess, three or four years. And today, something was just a little different. I haven't seen any other salamanders, but we did see a mud. We still got a little bit of habitat to go through, so there's a chance we could see another one or maybe some more common stuff, but... I'm a happy camper.